Hey, hi mom. Hello, how are you? I hope you're having a great day today. Um, yeah, it's still hot out here, so I'm sure it's hot out there. But we are on chapter, chapter 20, and we are reading Checkmate. I don't play a lot of chess, but I know it has to do with chess. I think you win if you get Checkmate. Yeah. All right, so they're waiting for the ship, the American, to meet so they can take the passengers and take them into um, Israel, hopefully Jerusalem. It was past four o'clock and the city Mezzani had already echoed across the old city calling the faithful to prayer. Haj Amin, Mutif of Jerusalem, had risen from his prayer rug, slipped on his shoes, and then he entered the patio where Hassan and Gerhardt waited. My friends, he said serenely, taking a seat across from him, and he clapped his hands twice, and his servant brought a silver pot of strong coffee and three tiny cups. Haj Amin poured the coffee himself and handed them to the men. Have you seen the photograph in the American magazine, he asked. Hassan nodded with his eyes downcast. Are you responsible for this, Hassan? Your Excellency, he began, his cup clattering on the saucer. We appear as murderers to the world, do we not? The motif snapped his finger and another servant brought a copy of Life magazine to him. He thumbed through the pages until he found the photograph of the tailor and the world weeps in sympathy with the Jews. He laughed as Hassan squirmed uneasily in his chair. Haj Amin turned his gaze on Gerhardt. Have you prepared our gift for the Jews of Benyatta? He inquired. Gerhardt nodded. Good. I fear we must prepare another first. Gerhardt frowned leaned forward intently, eyeing Haj Amin. It is a small thing. Haj licked his fingers and smiled shyly. Hassan has told me that he has seen the old woman, the housekeeper from the house of the red-headed woman. That's Ellie, Mom. She visits your hotel frequently. Her son lives there, I believe. Yes, Hassan. Hassan broke in and several other members of the family since the commercial district. Haj Amin cast a withering glance in his direction. Quite enough, Hassan? He coughed slightly. It is, of course, a plan of the Jews to gain sympathy from the world, to castigate us publicly in the press with pictures such as there, these. I need not tell you, Gerhardt, public publicity and terror go Hand in hand, we must, I fear, delay our gift to Ben Yura Street until the world has the opportunity to weep with us over the loss of Arab lives. What do you mean, Your Excellency? asked Hassan. Since the Jews bombed the Sumerians' hotel, who will say that we are unjust when we repay an eye for an eye? But the Jews have not... Hassan began only to be cut short by a glance from the motif. Okay, I lost my spot, Mom. <laughs> Haj Amin smiled knowingly at Gerhardt. It is but a few Christian Arabs, more or less. Would tonight be too soon, my friend? Hmm, inch. Inshallah, inshallah, I really don't know how to say these words. Hajimin, he answered, if Allah wills. Allah and Mutif, Hajimin threw his head back in laughter at his own cleverness. I think they're going to go bomb a hotel of Arabs, with Arabs in it. The late afternoon breeze ruffled the water and the Ave Maria bobbed in the swells, chin in his hand. Moshi stared out at the chessboard that was propped on the rope coil between Ehud and Ellie. I think she has you, Ehud, my friend. Moshi gulped down the last of Miriam's, oh, not a drink, the last of Miriam's zucchini bread. Ehud scowled. This game is far from over. The day will not be dawn when Ehud's chef will be beaten by a woman. The sun may set, however, Moshi, Moshi scratched his chin. 
Ellie smiled sweetly at Ehud and then moved her arm. Check. Ha! exclaimed Ehud in disgust. Slapping his fist on one knee, Ellie batted her eyes. A Gentile woman at that. It is not yet checkmate, he protested. Give it up, Ehud. Well, she patted him on the back and looked out over the horizon for the hundredth time. Thick, heavy clouds gathered to the north. Tiny swells in the early afternoon had become broader and deeper. If they don't arrive soon, we may be in trouble with the water. Weather. Like last time, eh? Ehud said with his eyes still intent on the board. When you pull the young woman, the young beauty, from sea, Ellie looked up curiously. That's what I never heard about. A Venus, Moshi told me. She jumped and he saved her. Some lucky fellow will thank him one day. Eh, Moshi? He nudged Moshi, who pretended not to hear as he raised the field glasses to his eyes and searched the horizon for a thin trail of smoke that would announce the arrival of the SS American. Did you put her back? Did you pull her back to the boat? Ellie asked, no longer interested in the chess game. Oh, no, interjected Ehud, ignoring the dirty look that Moshi cast in his direction. He swam all the way to the shore with her. They spent the night on the beach, and then he took her to Fanny's. Moshi, why didn't you tell me you were a hero? Ellie asked, feeling a rush of jealousy. He had rubbed his hands together delightfully and moved his only remaining rook. It is your move, he instructed Ellie. It's just part of the job, Moshi said, still staring through the field glasses. Ah, now admit it, Moshi, he had crossed his arms. You would not have jumped in for an old hag. Hmm. Well, he narrowed his eyes with satisfaction as Ellie's concentration disintegrated. Shut up, he had Moshi snapped. Play! Moshi shrugged innocently. innocently. It is her move, is it not? Was she really that pretty? Ellie absently fingered her knight. A dream made in heaven, Moshi told me. He had stared hopefully at Ellie's fingers. So move already. Oh, I suppose she was, Moshi answered irritably. What somewhat beautiful... Ellie moved her knight without thinking, and he had clapped his hands together as he made the final move of the game. Checkmate! He cried triumphantly. So, my sweet Gentile lady, you lose? You did that on purpose! Ellie protested. I did not! He grinned. And he gathered the chess pieces back up into the shoebox. Hmm. Moshi stood and walked to the bow of the ship, then peered through the field glasses at the thunderheads. There, in a thin line against the dark clouds, he saw a faint wisp of smoke. There she is, he called over his shoulder. Looks like she's ahead of the storm, just ahead. That is not good, he had handed the box to Ellie. We are late, as it is. After we transfer the passengers, we shall perhaps not land until dawn. I'll bet the sandwiches are stale too, Ellie said miserably as she wandered about the wondered about the beautiful woman that Moshi had rescued. No matter, let's get her underway. The sun was low on the horizon when at last the Ave Maria pulled alongside the rusting hulk of a freighter, SS American. One by one, the refugees were lowered to the deck. Women and children far outnumbered the men, and Ellie overheard Moshi speaking in low tones to Ehud about the need for men for military age, of military age. We must make it clear. They must be the last group until statehood is established. From now on, only young men or women strong enough to be trained to fight. It is too dangerous to risk the transport otherwise. Ehud nodded grimly, and Ellie hurried off to photograph the faces that seemed to reflect every argument for the statehood of Israel. Gaunt and hollow-eyed, cradling babies and clutching small children, women were led into the hold of the bobbing little trawler. They carried small bundles of belongings or nothing at all. 
Ellie thought of her own duffel bag stowed below deck. She probably brought more for an overnight trip than these people even owned. Grateful but haunted eyes met her as she helped a mother carry a baby down the steps. Ellie fought off a feeling of horror as she remembered the newsreels showing the concentration camps and the faces of the men and women as they walked in line for death. What have these people lived through? She wondered as they patiently took their places on the Ave Maria. No words were spoken that she could understand, but Moshi talked to each person in a kind and loving way, patting backs, shaking hands in welcome, thin knobby-kneed knobby boys in short pants and a ragged sweater. He smiled up adoringly at her, and Ellie noticed his teeth were decayed. How will he eat? She asked Moshi, aware that the boy would not understand her. When one is hungry enough, he answered, and then he spoke to the boy in Polish, ruffling his hair aff affectionately. We will make sure his teeth are fixed. If the scars, it is the scars that we cannot, and that breaks my heart. He shook his head sadly and then directed the boy to the hold as Ellie snapped their picture together. Moshi's eyes embraced the boy, and Ellie thought once again how much Moshi belonged. Her heart filled with admiration for him, and she wanted to put her arms around him and tell him how much she cared. When the last person was safely loaded, at the last the Ave Maria pulled away from the SS America. Ellie blinked back tears and touched Moshi's back as he stood in the bow with the wind on his face. I come here always, every time after we pick them up, and I think I will break something, you know? He gazed down at her, and his face was streaked with tears. Sorry, Mom. There is a poem your uncle has told me by a man named Byron. The birds have their nests, the fox have their dens, but only Israel has only the grave. I have heard it, but never un understood it before. Everyone has a country, everyone but a Jew. These, he motioned toward the hole, they have returned from the grave. It is hardest for me when I think that God has allowed this such suffering. It becomes my suffering because these are my people. Ellie wrapped her arms around him and laid her head against his chest. I wondered the same thing after the riot. Uncle Howard said that God didn't do this, that people did, and that the people who did do it don't know God, don't have the slightest idea who he is. Perhaps he is right. I haven't really yet known either, but I see this, and I think whoever God is, his heart must be breaking over the way we treat each other. <sighs> and Moshi it makes me want to know him, God, and be like him. She wiped the tears from his cheeks. I hope you find what you're looking for, and I hope the same for myself, that somehow someone can heal the wounds we cannot see. It is difficult sometimes to be near suffering, is it not? It makes me want to run and hide, she smiled. But the sandwiches are getting stale. Okay, yeah, sorry about that beeping, Mom. You know, that's a timer. David needs to come in and uh, start. We're making lasagna. So, but anyway, everyone's safely on the ship, and they're trying to get them back to Jerusalem. All right, I hope you have a great rest of your day, Mom.